miles of stunning white sand and the Gulf of Mexico. Not a bad place to spend your weekend racing your jet ski. Beautiful St. Pete Beach hosts the world's best jet ski riders for round two of the Aquacross Pro Enduro Tour. And if this weekend is anything like round one, you're in for a real treat. Daytona Beach started off the season with a bang and a few crashes, but as usual, nothing or nobody seemed to be able to stop Mr. Mack Attack McLuggage from winning all three races and leaving the table looking like this. Brian Baldwin in sixth on 30, Marcus Jorgensen in fifth. Then Arminio Iantosca tying on points with Aswar in third, with a great performance on the only Sidu in the top six. Eric Francis, who had a great weekend in second. And the man with the target on his back, Chris McLuggage. I'm here with our expert commentator, Mikey, and what a wild weekend in Daytona. Well, I'll tell you what, the waves were crazy. There were a lot of ups and downs, but after uh, the jet spray cleared, it was Chris McCluggage on that Monster Energy Yamaha. Do you think it'll be more of the same this weekend? Well, I'll tell you, he's going to have his hands full. Uh, Nicholas Rios is back, the fighter. He's coming back after an injury. Unfortunately, though, the Aswar brothers won't be here. Uh, their grandfather passed away, and our thoughts and prayers go out to the family. Absolutely. Now, who do we need to keep our eyes on this weekend? I'll tell you what, I still think that uh, McCluggage is the man to beat, no doubt about it. He's the Iron Man. We call him the GOAT for a reason. He's the greatest of all time. I grew up racing in the Atlantic and, uh, you know, on the waters of Florida, so that's why I love this uh, series so much because most of it is based in Florida. So for me, it's really cool, and my parents are at all the races, my brother and, you know, a lot of friends and family. So for me, that's that extra boost every weekend. This weekend's going to be a different weekend. The uh, water's flat. And with the water being flat, it kind of equals the playing field for a lot of the other riders. Uh, so Nicholas, is, Nicholas was great, you know, in the other race, but he hurt his back. But uh, here, it's going to be his type of water. He's really good in that small chop. I heard Eric Francis has an injury, so I don't know how good he'll do out there. And Baldwin, Baldwin's always fast in this stuff. And we're all on fast uh, equipment. We all, all have fast GPs, so uh, we should all be up there. Eric Francis was Mr. Consistent in the weekend in Daytona, but does he have it in the tank to beat McCluggage? The biggest heavy hitters out there have to be Nicholas Rios, uh, Brian Baldwin, and of course Chris McCluggage, but outside of that, we're not looking at anybody else. So Eric, you were Mr. Kawasaki and you joined the crowds on Yamaha. How is that? I, I'd have to say it's probably the best move I've ever done in my career. Uh, it's a bit scary, you know, changing to a totally different craft, but, you know, thanks to Riva and Scott Watkins at Yamaha, they made it as easy as it could be. All I have to do is hop on the boat, and they make sure it performs right, and we've been up front every race so far and for the battle, so I'm happy with it. And what would be a good result for you this weekend? Uh, we're looking for first. I mean, we have to make up points. We're sitting second overall in points, about, I think, 25 points behind Chris. So we got to get a couple good finishes, start regaining some of them points, and uh, make some momentum going into the next round. One of the most impressive performances in Daytona was Arminio Iantosca being able to put the sea dew on the podium. Arminio, how did you do that? Um, you know, just a lot of hard work in the off season, and I've been on sea dew for five years now, so a lot of time on it, getting used to it more and more every year, and uh, just put in a lot of hard work. Got the ski running really well, and uh, it works for me. I know it's hard out there on a sea dew, but seem to make it work, and uh, I enjoy it. You know, fitness is a big part. It's 30 minutes out there today. It's going to be super hot. Good thing I live in Florida, grew up in Florida, so I'm used to the heat, so it should play to my advantage. And, uh, you know, you can never be too fit. So I pride myself on working out really hard and trying to be in shape so I can go the full 30 minutes and finish the race faster than I started. One man who will be disappointed to be only sixth in the table is super fast Brian Baldwin. Brian, you made the switch from Dean's team to Reba. Has that been positive for you? It's been really good. Um, I get more focus on me. Um, which, you know, I need some of that sometimes. So, you know, they, they've really focused on helping me out in all areas, so it's, it's been really good. Great, now you and McCluggage got pretty close in Daytona. Is there gonna be more of the same? Uh, you know, it was a, kind of a mistake on his part. You know, he kind of, I was coming in hot. He was on a boat that he doesn't have a whole lot of experience with. He kind of parked it in the turn and, you know, and I was clamped. You know, I, I was dead intent on passing him. 
sounds pretty aggressive. Now, what yes. will you need to do this weekend to win? I just need to pay attention, um, you know, be on my game, uh, don't make any silly mistakes, don't fall off, be smart, um, get, get good starts, and um, that's pretty much it. Another man who may be feeling the pressure is former champion Eric Legopoulos, a Sea-Doo rider for years, but he's made the switch to Yamaha, and he's got a big new sponsor. Yeah, so we're super excited to announce uh, this weekend that Ford is uh, going to be our title sponsor for the rest of the year, and uh, so happy to bring them on board, and uh, we're excited to see uh, what we can do to make them proud. Now, Yamaha seems to be the must-have ski. Can you give us a tour? So some of the, the main three things that we changed to uh, get these Aquacross ready is the impeller, the intake grate and ride plate on the bottom, and the computer, the ECU. Now with all the modifications, is it a pretty even playing field out there? Yeah, you know, Dan, it really is. There's uh, guys from uh, all over the world here racing, and uh, we're all in really similar equipment. So um, it's, you know, as you can see, there's been some great racing. Um, you know, top 10 finishes are, uh, are, are pretty, are pretty uh, good to come by. So that's the setup. When we come back, we'll be racing. Welcome back to stunning St. Pete Beach. The riders are heading out to race one. Let's go over to Mikey. Thank you, Deanna. It's a great day here in St. Pete Beach as the world's top riders get ready to do battle here in the Gulf of Mexico. Chris McCluggage, Nicholas Rios, and Eric Francis all ready to do battle on this 1.7 mile course. Riders will start from the far north. There'll be six turns before uh, they can go past that front straightaway, which will give them the checkered flag and the finish line. As our riders get staged out here on the far north side of the track, as we view it here for the postcard in, it is just about time to go racing here for round number two of the P1 Aquacross Series. A couple more riders to be staged. And again, hole shot very important here as we go on board with Eric Francis. Eric will be piloting the Yamaha GP 1800 today as we take a look through the goggles of Mr. Francis. And here we go. Nicholas Rios takes a look. Flag drops and we are off and away. 30 minutes plus a lap on board with the fighter. Nicholas Rios riding for Beach Shack Reynolds as well as Riva Racing. And you can tell a little bit choppy there along the back straightaway as 25 riders get ready to head into one turn 80 plus mile per hour. And guess what, folks? No brakes. Here we go. Again, it looks like uh, Eric Francis flanked to his left is Chris McCluggage. And beyond McCluggage, I believe we've got Brian Baldwin. Baldwin on the red and white Yamaha trimmed in black. And Baldwin with the early lead as we view it here from the postcard in. He's got McCluggage right now in his back pocket as they get ready to make the turn. Turn number one. You see on board with McCluggage. Baldwin uh, just a couple boat lengths in front of him. Flanked to his left. Baldwin eyeballing that hole shot, and here we go. It looks like Brian Baldwin riding for Champion Motorsports, and Reba Racing will go ahead and grab the first hole shot here in race number one. So it's Brian Baldwin followed by McCluggage, and uh, taking a look a little further back, I believe that's Abdullah Al Fidel on the Dean's Team Yamaha. Taking a look through McCluggage's goggles right now, he's got Baldwin in front of him. About three seconds off the pace being thrown down by Baldwin is McCluggage. And there we go, we got Al Fidel in the four spot, the fighter, Nicholas Rios, boat number 217 out of Lake Havasu City by way of Marseille, France. Now taking a look at Rios' GoPro mounted on the front hood of that Yamaha that he's on. And you can see he's taking a little beating out there. Currently we got Brian Baldwin in front, McCluggage in second. And Rios in third on board with McCluggage. And you can see McCluggage about three seconds again off of the pace being thrown down by Brian Baldwin. Chris McCluggage, again, riding for Monster Energy and Broward Motorsports, making his sponsors proud. He was the winner in Daytona, race number one, and trying to carry it over uh, and make it four in a row as he's went back all the way to Lake Worth. Now on board with Ford-sponsored Eric Legopoulos. Legopoulos picking up some new corporate sponsorship via Ford. Congratulations, Eric. Taking a look at your race leader, Brian Baldwin, looking smooth out there. But here comes McCluggage. McCluggage on his outside. They are side by side, and it is a drag race on that back stretch of the course. Brian trying to power out of it as uh, Chris staying right there, keeping him in his gun sights as they work their way up to the south side of the track, make the turn, and get ready to head into that chicane before coming down the front straightaway. Once again, it is Baldwin 
and he'll slam the door shut on McCluggage as they get ready to come down that front straight. And here we go, working left to right as we view it here from the postcard in. It is Brian Baldwin, followed by McCluggage, one and two. Third place, a big battle going on. Rias now able to get past. So Nicholas Rias has moved past Al Fidel. Al Fidel in the fourth spot. He's to pick out with that pink helmet out there. And that is uh, Eric Francis currently in the fifth spot. So that's the way they stack up one through five here as uh, we head toward the middle of this race here. Taking a look back, you can still take a look there at uh, the battle for fourth spot, and that is Al Fidel and Francis. Back up to second place, Chris McCluggage, and McCluggage with a pole in the water, trying to reel in your leader. And a great shot there from the drone. As you see, we are three wide going down the front straightaway. A great day for racing and uh, conditions. Uh, pretty awesome here this weekend for these riders. Not uh, checking out quite the surf that they had in Daytona. And I'm sure that a lot of these riders are uh, pretty happy about that. Going on board with the Nolanator, Victor Nolan. Nolan currently running in that 10th place position, riding for Jiffy Lube and Pennzoil. Back out to your race leaders. And uh, it is still uh, Baldwin in front, but don't look now, Baldwin. Here comes McCluggage. You got McCluggage, Alpha Dell, and uh, Rias battling right now. As uh, Rias able to overtake that third place position. Here's your battle for fourth. That is Alpha Dell and Francis. Francis climbing back into this one on the 911. Will the Eagle land here in St. Pete Beach? We shall see, ladies and gentlemen. Again, it's Baldwin, McCluggage, and Rias, one, two, and three, and uh, three names synonymous with being up on the podium here at P1 Aquacross. You're watching round number two. And again, Eric Francis trying to reel in your top four right now as he works his way past Al Fidel. Back to Brian Baldwin, your race leader. And Baldwin uh, out of North Carolina bouncing around out there and that's going to put McCluggage right back into this as uh, McCluggage not too far off the pace here being thrown down by Baldwin as Baldwin able to dispose of some back markers and you can see your race leaders not too much uh, distance between first and second as Baldwin can feel the heat being applied by McCluggage as he gets ready to come down the front straightaway once again and you can see again only two and a half three seconds as he goes through that start finish line once again. And we are pretty much nearing the halfway point of this one here, ladies and gentlemen, as we take a look out, your riders headed to the north, northernmost buoy of the track. It is still Baldwin followed by McCluggage. Take a look at McCluggage right there as Eric Francis now trying to uh, make a move on Nicholas Rios. The fighter has been in a solid third place position here the last couple laps. But after Francis was able to get past Alphadel, he has put himself uh, in a great place here as we head toward the latter stages of this race. So Eric Francis, again, in that fourth place position. Rias in third, McCluggage in second. And you can take a look through the goggles there of uh, Eric Francis, and he's getting pump watched left and right there by your third place rider, the fighter, Nicholas Rias. Riding for Beach Shack Reynolds out of Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Again, it's Baldwin, McCluggage, and Rias, one, two, and three. And a lovely day here in St. Pete Beach as the crowd has come out in droves. Chris McCluggage still trying to catch up to Baldwin. Baldwin again off to his left. And uh, going past the lap rider. Looks like they split the lap rider there, right there. As Baldwin makes his way toward the Devil Tetrahedons and back into the P1 Aquacross course. And here comes McCluggage. McCluggage on the outside. Look at this, McCluggage now able to get past Baldwin. Will he be able to make it stick? Baldwin has position as they come into the turn. And McCluggage just gets out the broom and sweeps hard and is able to steal the lead away from Baldwin. So it's McCluggage, Baldwin, and Rias, one, two, and three. A great move there by the GOAT. And we call him the GOAT because he is the greatest of all time, the most winningest rider ever in personal watercraft racing. As we go on board here with the Mac attack, Chris McCluggage. And uh, you can see just what it looks like to be going 67 and a half mile per hour with a lapped rider in front of you. McCluggage takes a turn, takes a look behind him. He'll find Baldwin right there. Baldwin's not gonna be anywhere. He's gonna be right there waiting for a slip trip or a bobble from McCluggage and McCluggage. You don't see too many slip trips and bobbles from McCluggage, that is for sure. We'll see if these lappers slow him down. He's got a couple back markers in front of him. 
as again he works his way to the northernmost buoy on the track. Course Marshall's doing a great job getting that blue flag out there, letting these uh, lapped riders know to move over that the leaders are coming through. As we take a look at Eric Francis, the Eagle, again has worked his way up to fourth spot, got uh, the fighter Nicholas Rios in his gun sights. Speaking of Rios, here we go on board with Nicholas Rios. Bouncing around out there as he takes a look behind him and uh, he can feel the heat being uh, applied there. As we take a look back at McCluggage and McCluggage with uh, boat number 223 flanked to his right. I believe that's Didier Charbet out of France and uh, Charbet about ready to uh, go a lap down as they work their way down the front straightaway and get ready to head back out and McCluggage getting pump washed there. And not quite sure, it looks like uh, he's uh, lost a little bit of power. We'll see if this lap rider has anything to do with that. As uh, we take a look, it's still McCluggage, Baldwin, and Rias. And McCluggage, uh-oh, looks like he loses his lanyard. Baldwin able to go by on the left-hand side. So Brian Baldwin moves back into the lead. McCluggage gets hooked back up, still stays in that second place position. But oh my, what a turn of events here. As Brian Baldwin moves into the lead, McCluggage slides back into second. And you still have the fighter, Nicholas Rias, in third, followed by the Eagle, Eric Francis, in fourth. Baldwin, McCluggage, Rias, one, two, and three as we take a look at the leaderboard. And uh, Baldwin with uh, time uh, ticking down on this one here. Again, it was 30 minutes plus a lap. Again, only got a couple more minutes left to go. As we take a look down there, some great footage uh, from the drone. A great day to be at the beach here in St. Pete. Our leader still Brian Baldwin. The white flag is out, less than a lap to go. And one more chicane for Brian Baldwin as he gets ready to make the turn down into the front straightaway. The checkered flag will come out and that'll do it. Race number one belongs to the tweaker, Brian Baldwin. A great comeback there for the number 502 factory Reba Racing Pilot. Again, Brian Baldwin out of Mooresville, North Carolina, Race City, USA. And here comes second place. It's going to be the Mac Attack Chris McCluggage, boat number 46 as the checkered flag drops. Here in St. Pete, Baldwin, McCluggage, Nicholas Rias, Eric Francis, one, two, three, and four, and the two Frenchmen, fifth and sixth, Francois Midori and Sorel Lamont. Again, congratulations to Brian Baldwin. Brian doing an amazing job out there on that Riva Factory Racing Yamaha, able to hold off the hard charges being put on by McCluggage, Francis, and Rias. Congratulations, Brian Baldwin. Let's go down to Deanna and see what he has to say. First race of the weekend and you did it so fast. How did you do it, Brian? Man, I just, I tried to go all out the whole moto um, and, and be smart, you know, don't make any mistakes, don't fall off, you know, don't pull my lanyard. Um, and that's what it took. Secret is just don't let up, but can you do it again? I think so. So an amazing win for Brian Baldwin and Chris, the Mac Attack McLuggage, finally beaten, even if he was a bit under the weather. We'll take a short break and we'll be back for race two. Across round two right here in St. Pete Beach. Awesome racing in an amazing location. In round one, Brian Baldwin had a great race and took home the honors. And ski legend Chris McLuggage finally showed a chink in the armor. We had, um, you know, I mean, second place is all right because it's the first um, motor of the weekend, so it's not that bad. Uh, with it being sick, I just want to come out for the week. Uh, the weekend was a consistent finish, and uh, uh, not I me, mean, Brian beating me. I still beat the Francis. I still beat the other guys that were top three last week, and so, so I'm still, you know, doing good in the points. So and that's what we're here for. We're so honored to be here with Aquacross in St. Pete Beach. Tell me what it's like to host the event. You know, so we're so fortunate here to host you in one of America's best beaches here in St. Pete Beach. The brand of St. Pete Clearwater runs throughout the entire Pinellas County area. And I tell you, we couldn't be more thrilled to host you here. And you guys are such a great opportunity for us to showcase. So thank you. The skis are heading out for race two and over to Mikey. Hey, thanks, Deanna. Race number two being staged right now. Top riders in the world here to do battle at round number two of the P1 Aquacross Championships. 
Once again, uh, the conditions have not changed since a little earlier today. Taking a look at the fighter. The fighter with the third place in the first moto. Going to try to better that. And Baldwin, winner of the first moto. Eric Legopoulos also in this one. Again, picking up that new Ford sponsorship. Eric also sponsored by Riva Racing. On board with Chris Saxon. This is Chris's rookie year here in the Pro Enduro 300 class. As we get ready to uh, drop the flag, we are on board with the tweaker, Brian Baldwin, winner of race number one in a green flag drops. We are off and away. Again, 25 riders, no brakes. First turn, it is going to be hairy, ladies and gentlemen. So taking a look out there, looks like uh, Chris McCluggage and uh, Victor Nolan out toward the front right now, the Nolanator out of Baltimore, Maryland. Glad to have him with us here this weekend. His wife a winner in the 200 class in the amateur division a little earlier today. Chris McCluggage darts out to an early lead. Baldwin right there in his back pocket. And I believe that is the fighter, Nicholas Rias and Eric Francis also up there near the top. On board with Brian Baldwin. Baldwin currently in that second place position right behind McCluggage. As McCluggage gets ready to uh, tuck it in here and grab a hole shot. That'll be his uh, second hole shot of the weekend on that Monster Energy Broward Motorsports Yamaha. Looks like he's got uh, Baldwin right behind him and uh, the fighter, Nicholas Rias, currently sitting in the third spot. So it's Mac out in front as he gets ready to uh, work his way down the front straightaway. Working left to right in front of St. Pete Beach and the fans have come out uh, in droves this weekend. They are everywhere up and down the beach. Thousands of people here come to check out P1 Aquacross Tour, round number two. McCluggage, Baldwin, and Rias all fighting it out right now for those top three positions. As we take a look, a great shot there from the Greenlight TV drone as they head out to that northernmost buoy and get ready to make the turn and head down that back straightaway. On board with McCluggage, your race leader. Again, uh, competing today atop his uh, Yamaha FX as he works his way coming into the chicane north side of the track right now. Taking a look behind him, he's still got the fighter, Nicholas Rias, Brian Baldwin, and Eric Francis. And that's the way they stack up, one through four right now. As McCluggage gets ready to drop into that front straightaway, and you can see the flotilla building up uh, along the outskirts of the racetrack. A lot of boaters coming out to check out today's event. Nicholas Rias popping and locking everywhere down the side of the racetrack. McCluggage, Rias, Baldwin, one, two, and three as we go back on board with the Mac attack, checking out that GoPro footage uh, from the front hood of his boat. You can see he's getting jarred around as he works his way down the back straightaway as uh, the surf's starting to pick up just a little bit here in St. Pete Beach. Again, McCluggage still trying to keep Rias and Baldwin in his rear view mirror as we take a look at Nicholas Rias, the fighter, again out of Lake Havasu City, Arizona by way of Marseille, France, and Nicholas, the protege of Yves Van Eers and uh, brought over to the United States back in 1990 for his first world championships uh, out in Lake Havasu City. So it's great to see uh, Nick coming back after a six year hiatus. Again, he was down with a back injury and uh, back out uh, after Daytona. This is his first uh, shot back. So glad to have him here. Took a third in the first moto. We'll see if he can better that as we took a look at uh, Brian Baldwin and Brian uh, currently sitting in that third spot, but he's got his hands full right now with uh, Eric Francis as we take a look at Legopolis. Eric Legopolis out of Sarasota, Florida, where he uh, runs a restaurant down there called the Waterfront 2. And we're gonna be down in Sarasota for uh, round number three of the P1 Aquacross Championships. And again, congratulations to Eric on that new Ford sponsorship. It's still McCluggage, Rias, and Baldwin, one, two, and three. As uh, we get the overhead shot here from St. Pete Beach and you can see that the fighter, Nicholas Rias, trying to stay right there with your race leader. Boat number 46, that is Chris McCluggage. Again, out of Naples, Florida. Chris has the whole family here. His brother, Rick, uh, helping spin the wrenches this weekend along with Dean's team. And uh, of course, uh, Kenny Waddle, Sam Neeby, running uh, his pit crew from uh, Broward Motorsports. And of course, his mom, Richard, his mom, Helen and his dad, Richard, in the crowd with us here today as well. So Chris got the, a whole team of folks with him. Uh-oh, Chris has a problem. Looks like he pulled a lanyard again, had that same problem in the first moto, and he better hurry up or Rias is going to be able to get by, and Rias looks like he is able to get by. Rias on the inside with a lap rider in front of Rias. Rias going to dive in front of the lap rider, and now we've got a lap rider in between first and second place. That is Rias in front, McCluggage in second. 
And we still have, I believe, Baldwin back there in the third position. So it's Rias McCluggage, Baldwin, one, two, and three as we near the halfway point here in St. Pete Beach, round number two of the P1 Aquacross Tour. Back on board with uh, your race leader, Nicholas Rias, and Rias holding on for dear life out there. This would be his first win ever at a P1 Aquacross event. Again, ran uh, the first race in Daytona, took a second in that race, and uh, took a third in the first race here this weekend. The only two uh, races that he has completed with the P1 Aquacross Series. And you can see uh, Rias trying to dispose of that lap traffic. Meanwhile, back to Brian Baldwin, who is fighting for that third place position. Still has Francis about two seconds uh, off the pace. That's your uh, difference between third and fourth place right now. Now things could change in a hurry as we still have Rias, McCluggage, and Baldwin running one, two, and three. Nicholas Rias, again, a former stand-up rider turned runabout rider. As the white flag comes out, we are on the last lap. Again, Rias in search of his first victory here in P1 Aquacross. A great ride being had by Nicholas Rias out there. Again, coming off that back injury, and you gotta wonder if that back's bothering him at all. As we near the latter stages of this one, only uh, two more buoys to negotiate before this deal is in the books, folks. Nicholas Rias holding on for dear life, and his first victory here at P1. Down the front straightaway one final time, and you can see the arm is in the air, and the Frenchman is visibly excited here in St. Pete. Congratulations, Nicholas Rias taking his first Aquacross victory. And Chris McCluggage, again, going to have to settle for second place, and uh, that's a tough break there for uh, Chris McCluggage, but again, it's consistency that uh, wins overall championships. You don't have to win the battle to win the war. Nicholas Rios uh, celebrating on board with Eric Francis. Francis now able to get past Baldwin, and this is uh, your third place rider now. So the Eagle, Eric Francis, will end up on the podium here for race number two, and Brian Baldwin gonna have to settle for fourth place position after a, a dazzling race in race number one. So again, an amazing job there by Brian Baldwin as we take a look at uh, the rest of the pack coming through our start finish line. I believe that was uh, Midori and followed in by uh, Ian Tosca and that was your battle for six and seven. Taking a look, it was Nicholas Rios, your winner, followed by McCluggage, Francis in third, Baldwin in fourth, the Clipper out of Canada in fifth and Francois Midori rounds out your top six. So again, uh, the fighter Nicholas Rios being congratulated by his crew down there from Riva Racing. Yeah, Dave Bam, this uh, giving him a big hug. Going to take the hat right off of his head. Give it to Nick. How about that? Nicholas Rios, your winner. Wow, you've been working hard and resting a little bit. Um, how did it feel to be back on the water? It feels amazing, you know. It's, uh, I decided to come back. It was November 1st. That's when I started training. That's when I contacted uh, Dave Arriva, my longtime sponsors. You know, we go to Daytona, first moto, we got second. I got injured. And now this day, we come back and take six weeks off training. So I'm kind of... I feel like I'm behind the hair ball, but I guess uh, I told before that I said somebody can do it. We've been another way I wanted to be. I can do it, and, and I did today, so I'm very happy. Well, great race out there today, and can you come back and do it tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. Right now I'm going to go do some little exercise, recovering, and uh, I just want to thank all my fans and, uh, you know, all my team, Beach Act Rentals, Yamaha River, Jetlift, my baby boy, Jaden. I love you, son. Unbelievable ride from the Frenchman, incredible after his back injury. Another race, another winner. When we come back, we'll catch up with Jason Russo and find out what it's like to be a part of the Geico Super Team. And we've got race three. Who will win the weekend in St. Pete Beach? Sports is Geico with a super boat, a super stock boat, and a Yamaha jet ski. We caught up with Aqua Cross star Jason Russo to figure out what it's like to race with the big boys. Believe it or not, P1 brought us all together. They thought that I would be a perfect fit with their team with my background in uh, boats. You know, I have a boat repair business in Bradenton. The first time I came here, I was overwhelmed with how massive their shop is. 
And uh, that's when you realize the seriousness that they put behind their race program to get that boat out in the water when they do compete on it. Everything they do here is a grade A level of professionalism. Aquacross does such a professional job of putting on the series. The skis are all relatively stock within reason and um, the competition. The, you know, we're all pretty even in the, as far as our level of from beginner to novice to all the way to pros, everyone can kind of be on the same playing field. I would love to actually race a powerboat one day. Uh, it's been a dream of mine since I was a small child to get into a powerboat. A lot of people ask me how come I have not done it yet, especially having a business fixing boats. I'm sure it's gonna be in the near future for me. Those guys are in luxury in that powerboat. We're getting beat up. Our body's the shock absorber, they got a seat. I actually did tell them that I'm gonna make them ride one of the machines so they can get an idea of how fast they are. And who wouldn't want to race Miss Geico? Now it's time for race three, and Frenchman Nicholas Rias currently leads the table after race two. Will he win the weekend, or will current champion Chris the Mac Attack make a comeback? Nicholas, amazing victory on race two. Can you do it again? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, right now we focus. I recover very well, and I did some warm up this morning. My uh, skis running awesome, and uh, yeah, we're ready. Whoop, whoop. Are you feeling better today, and can you win the final race? Uh, to be honest, I, I can win anything at any time, but uh, I'm a little bit sore today and I'm going to do my best and I, I should be able to pull it off today. Uh, you know, I got a great team of guys behind me and I can't let them down. Um, so I'm going to try my best and uh, hopefully put that Broward Motorsports Monster Energy D team ski up on top of the podium. Well, that's enough of the talk. Who will walk the walk? Let's head over to Mikey and find out it's time for race three. Thanks, Deanna. A lot of proud papas watching on today on this gorgeous Father's Day weekend here at St. Pete Beach. Final race, round number two coming up as our riders get ready and being staged. Again, they'll start from the top north side of the track as we view it here from the beach. Coming into today, uh, the points, Nicholas Rios with 40 points. He leads the pack. Brian Baldwin with 38, McCluggage with 36, Francis 28, Midori with 23, and a Clipper with 19. So Rios will be the rider with the bullseye on his back, a two-point lead coming in over Baldwin, a four-point lead over McCluggage. Eric Francis patiently waits for the start here of our third and final race. A beautiful weekend of racing here at St. Pete Beach as the green flag goes up high in the air. Riders being staged 25 wide here as we get ready to start. Taking a look on board with Eric Francis. Eric sponsored by Quakey Sense as well as Monster Energy. And here we go, green flag is dropped. We are off and away, 30 minutes plus a lap to glory here in St. Pete this weekend. And as we take a look out, a bunch of riders trying to squirt out toward the front there. And it looks like uh, Ian Tosca with a good start. Eric Francis and McCluggage also both with a good start. We'll see if uh, they can hold on to it and some great drone footage being thrown down here again by our friends at Greenlight TV. And it is going to be tight. McCluggage on the inside. It looks like Ian Tosca in the middle and on the outside, Francis. We'll see if they make it stick like that as they get a little closer here to turn number one. Eric Francis again piloting the Yamaha GP1800 sponsored by Dave's Auto Body and Riva Racing down in Pompano Beach. It looks like McCluggage going to be your early leader. Here comes Francis side by side with Arminio Ian Tosca. And Ian Tosca gives way to Francis, so it's going to be McCluggage, followed by Francis Baldwin, also up in the mix there as we go on board with Brian Baldwin, who's also on the Yamaha GP1800, sponsored by Reba Racing. Green flags are out, and that means that the course is clear, and that's good news for Chris McCluggage out of Naples, Florida. So Chris, once again, able to uh, grab that hole shot. That was his hat trick of hole shots for the weekend. Three for three this weekend. As we go on board with Brian Baldwin. Baldwin currently sitting in that fifth place position right behind Rias. And of course, your top three, McCluggage, Francis, and Ian Tosca. 
So we can see a whole bunch of uh, riders here from the back of the pack. And uh, going back up toward the front of the pack, let's go back to uh, boat number 911, the Eagle Eric Francis. We talked a little bit about what he needs to do. We'll see if he can do it uh, this weekend. Again, congratulations uh, to uh, his uh, lovely wife, Sophie Francis, taking a the first woman to take a win in uh, amateur racing in the 300 Enduro this weekend. So congratulations to uh, Sophie as we go back out to the front of the pack here with uh, Chris McCluggage, followed by the Eagle Eric Francis. Again, Francis with a pole in the water, trying to reel in uh, the Mac attack. We'll see if he can do so. Still a lot of time left to go in this one as they work their way up through the chicane, headed out to the north side of the track. Ian Tosca still in the third spot, followed by the fighter, Nicholas Rias. And uh, in fifth place, Brian Baldwin, as we go back on board with Brian Baldwin, and you can see nothing but jet spray in front of him as we take a look through his lenses. Again, top three, or top four riders, rather, in front of Baldwin as he gets ready to head down that back straightaway, making the turn at the northernmost buoy headed toward the Devil Tetrahedons. Still got Mac out in front, Francis in second, Ian Tosca in third, and uh, Ian Tosca, great story here. He's got uh, the top running Sea-Doo out there uh, in the pack, uh, the top out of the top five, only one Sea-Doo, and that is Ian Tosca, who currently sits in third place on boat number 94, sponsored by Riva Racing and Mamma Mia's Pizza out of Naples, Florida. Your top two riders, McCluggage and Francis, again, getting ready to come down that front straightaway. And only about two seconds in between first and second place right now as we go on board with the Mac attack as he is in that attack position come along, coming along the beach side. And taking a look back, fifth place still, boat number 502, Brian Baldwin. Again, Baldwin a winner in race number one this weekend doing what he can to get past the fighter, Nicholas Rios, but Rios right now in a solid fourth place position. The difference about 3.5 seconds in between fourth and fifth place. As we take a look at our, your top three riders, pretty evenly spaced out right now. McCluggage, Francis, and Ian Tosca. Again, McCluggage on boat number 46. Francis on 9-11, and Ian Tosca on boat number 94. Uh, Eric Francis getting tossed around out there as uh, the water's starting to chop up and we have some weather looming just off to the east. Your top three riders all on the screen right now. McCluggage, again, down the front straightaway, still with Francis and Ian Tosca behind him. A great race here for uh, Chris McCluggage, and I'm sure he'd like to take those 25 points home, which you would get for first place with him. And here comes Ian Tosca, Ian Tosca in third. Here's your battle for uh, third, fourth, and fifth. Ian Tosca, Rias, and Baldwin. And uh, Rias uh, starting to close the gap on Ian Tosca. And Baldwin's starting to close the gap on Rias. So uh, things starting to tighten up for that uh, third and final podium position. McCluggage, Francis, and Ian Tosca still your leaders. Again, uh, McCluggage trying to stay hooked up. You see the fighter right there trying to reel in boat number 94. And boat number 94 is the black and white sea dew trimmed in gold. That is Ian Tosca. And Ian Tosca right now will have his hands full as he comes down the front straightaway, but he's got Nicholas Rios right there in fourth. Brian Baldwin still in that fifth place position. A great race out here, our third and final race of the weekend, and it has been an amazing Father's Day weekend here at the Postcard Inn. Back on board with Nicholas Rios in his GP1800. Nicholas a winner in race number two, comes into this race. The points leader, all he needs to do is stay where he's at, and he, he will take the overall win for the weekend. But again, uh, staying where you're at, he's still got a lot of time left. We'll see if he can uh, hold it together out there. Taking a look back out to your leader, Chris McCluggage, coming up uh, on a back marker, and I believe that is uh, boat number 777. He's on borrowed property. That's the outlaw, Eric Legopoulos, on uh, Jason Russo's uh, backup uh, Geico boat. But here comes McCluggage, and the blue flag's being thrown at Legopoulos, and that means he's gonna have to yield to the number 46 as he lets him get by. Eric Francis still holding on to that second place on the Yamaha GP1800. And it is getting rougher out there as we see a lot of sheep on the bay today here, a lot of white water out there. Brian Baldwin now trying to make a pass and does on the fighter, Nicholas Rios. So uh, Brian Baldwin moves up into that fourth place position. And now he sets his sights on boat number 94, Ian Tosca, only about four boat lengths off the pace as both riders get ready to come down the front straightaway. And now you're seeing what Brian Baldwin sees right now. And it looks like nothing but jet spray out there. 
So Baldwin having to hit the brakes as they head over here to the turn on the north side of the track. Through the chicane they go. And boat number 94 is still going to maintain that third place position. I and Tosca. But don't look now. Here comes Baldwin. And you can see Baldwin makes a turn as they get ready to split a back marker along the back straightaway. And we'll see if that lap traffic plays a part here in Baldwin, uh, attempt, Baldwin's attempt, rather, to get past Ian Tosca. We still got McCluggage, Francis, and Ian Tosca, one, two, and three. As uh, McCluggage riding steady Eddie right now, all he, uh, he's doing what he needs to do. Again, those 25 points would help him out in his overall quest for a win for the weekend. And by the way, congratulations to Chris, who was just notified that he is the overall points leader out of all six P1 Aquacrosses going on across the globe. And there is your race leader as uh, the green flag comes out. That means that this race here is halfway complete. And we still got your top three, McCluggage, followed by Francis and Iantoska rounding out your top three, but Iantoska's got his hands full, and you can see they're three wide coming down the front straightaway. Iantoska on the inside, Baldwin on the outside, and here comes Baldwin side by side with Iantoska, and Baldwin's going to have position as they get ready to come down the front straightaway, and it is Brian Baldwin. Baldwin racing with Legopoulos down the front straightaway, but Legopoulos will lap down. Baldwin will move into that third place position, and Iantoska, boat number 94, has to settle for fourth. So a nice pass there, and way to use that lap traffic by Brian Baldwin on the factory Riva Racing Yamaha GP1800. And you can take a look right now as uh, we are taking a look at uh, Baldwin as he takes a look over it. I believe that's where he'll find uh, what a lapped rider. So Baldwin able to get past another lapped rider as, uh-oh, uh we got trouble. Nicholas Rios is pulling off the track. So a tough break there for Nicholas Rios, who had the points lead coming into this one, and now going to settle for a DNF here in the third and final race, and that's going to put him right off of the podium, and that spells good news for boat number 46, because if things stay as they are, then uh, boat number 46, McCluggage, will take the overall win. Now Francis needs to not only get past McCluggage, but McCluggage has to place sixth place or worse for Francis to take the overall win. And if things stay as they are right now, Francis and Baldwin would both be tied with 53 points. However, Francis would take the position because it's whoever does better in the third race if there is a tie in points. Very similar to what you would see in motocross or moto scoring, but this is actually race scoring. So again, taking a look, Francis now side by side with McCluggage. McCluggage darts back ahead of Francis, but Francis putting in a heck of a show right there. As Francis this time will try the outside, picks up the broom, sweeps hard, and now able to get past McCluggage. The Eagle has landed here in St. Pete Beach, and I see one proud papa out there jumping up and down, and that is Ed Francis, his boy out in front right now. And what a Father's Day present that is. A uh, race number three victory. I'm sure Ed would be happy with that. Again, as uh, we take a look out, plenty of spectators out on the beach. And uh, a great day to be uh, here in St. Pete. Swimming, race spectating, doing whatever you do. But uh, St. Pete Beach, this place has been absolutely amazing to uh, each and every one of us as we take a look at where your race leader is on the course, getting ready to come into that front straightaway. And that is Eric Francis. Again, Eric riding for Quakey Sense as the white flag comes out. Quakey Sense and Riva Racing both sponsoring uh, Eric Francis this season. And good news for Eric, the hallelujah flag has been shown. Brian Baldwin uh, advances up into that third spot with uh, Rias having to uh, pull off and able to get past Hermedio I and Tosca. So again, Eric Francis, your race leader with not too much time to go as he gets rid of some lap traffic. One more turn to go before this one is in the books. Ladies and gentlemen, how about it? Eric Francis makes it happen. As you can see, the arm going up in the air, and this kid has got to be stoked. His uh, wife, Sophie, jumping up and down and uh, hugging Ed Francis down here on the beach, Eric's father. And I'll tell you, a fitting Father's Day. Let's take a look at how things shook out. It was Eric Francis in first, McCluggage in second, Brian Baldwin in third, Arminio Iantosca in fourth, the Clipper in fifth, and Chris Saxon rounds out your top six. Well, a great day for uh, Eric Francis as uh, Reggie Bigler goes down and salutes him. Boat number 46 with the checkered flag, though. He'll get the overall win for the weekend, and that's four weekends in a row dating back to Lake Worth for the Mac attack. 2-2-2, two, two two, consistency won the weekend.
You know, I didn't get my dad anything because I'm, I'm a tight ass. I got three kids and stuff. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I just, uh, this is what I want to get my dad for Father's Day. So come here, dad. Yeah, this victory is for you, dad. Happy Father's Day. I love you. So, so far in the P1 Aquacross USA Championship, McCluggage with 129 points. He's your leader, followed by Eric Francis with 95, 83 for Baldwin, 62 for Ian Tosca, 58 for Rias, and 54 for the Clipper. It's time to celebrate here in St. Pete. A great win for McCluggage. Next up, the Aquacross Pro Tour moves to Sarasota for the 4th of July celebrations. There are sure to be fireworks, and we'll see you there.